So Andrew Yang is learning the hard way that if you go out of your way to endorse a genocidal apartheid regime right when they're in the middle of an ethnic cleansing of a particular area in East Jerusalem, you're going to get some pushback for that. And that should be expected because I think most people are against war crimes, especially as we learn more and more about how many children are being killed by Israel's airstrikes. So um, he was in the streets of New York City and he was confronted by activists who did not like what he had to say via Twitter defending Israel's war crimes. Take a look. This is uh, this is justice served. A woman inside of the holiest mosque, one of the holiest mosques, and you're supporting that. And you want to be mayor of my city? You want to be my mayor? Hell no! You need to get the fuck out. You don't speak for us. You do not represent us. Your advocacy means absolutely nothing. You do not have no support in New York City. Absolutely not. We have no more votes here. You are done for. You are done for. You're literally sitting here getting support from people that are all right white supremacists. Like, we know this to be true. He just came back to New York City. He wasn't living in New York City. Oh, yeah. And you moved away. You went to work for 26 years. Thank you, everyone. What do you have to say about your tweet directly to New Yorkers right now? It's heartbreaking. All of this is happening in the Middle East. It's heartbreaking. Right. It is. It is. Young people are dying. Civilians are dying. Do you condemn Israel for that? Do you condemn Israel for their unjust acts against the innocent Palestinians? Uh, Sir, I'm yeah, talking we to him. We got the over here. We got I'm the talking to him. We got a guy. Don't say anything no. that's going to fuck up your you. campaign. Don't and don't that's me. why you don't have my vote, and I guarantee you, you don't have the vote of a lot of New Yorkers. That was great. Uh, the woman in that video said, you don't speak for us. And on top of that, she said, uh, don't say anything that's going to fuck up your campaign. She sees right through him. I hope that most people do. It's painfully obvious that what he's trying to do, what he did with that, with that tweet, uh, was pander. He's just pandering. He was never really good on the Israel-Palestine issue when he was running for president. In fact, he was terrible, to be frank. Uh, but what he's doing now by going out of his way to defend Israel and effectively draw a line in the sand saying, I will defend Israel no matter what, unconditionally, is he's taking the politically expedient, cowardly position of trying to appease as many people as he needs to get elected. He knows that if he doesn't unequivocally support what Israel is doing, even when they're literally doing war crimes, the Israel lobby might not support him. They may uh, not just withhold funds from Andrew Yang, perhaps they could fund one of his opponents. So he knows that he kind of has to say this in order to get elected. But I mean, if it were me, and um, saying something like condemning a genocide would lose me an election, then so be it. Because if you can't even condemn a genocide of an apartheid state, then what good are you? If you don't have the cow if you don't have the uh the spine to stand up now because you're too much of a coward, then when you get elected, you're not gonna stand up to special interests or any industries. You're gonna roll over and die if you're already doing it on the campaign trail. And as you saw with that confrontation, he didn't even commit to saying the bare minimum. He called the uh, deaths on the Palestinian side heartbreaking, but he still refused to condemn Israel's airstrikes. It's so shameless and craven. He should be ashamed of himself. I'm actually shocked that he's showing his face in New York City after putting out a tweet where he effectively endorsed genocide. That's just, it's disgusting. Are you going to come out in favor of uh, South African apartheid next? Yang. So um, there was another video that I want to play for you. He was supposed to attend an event where he delivered groceries to organizers um, for Eid, which is, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, by the way. So if I am, forgive me. Uh, but basically this is a post Ramadan feast. So he was supposed to deliver groceries and all of a sudden that's not on his schedule. So a reporter asked what was ha what happened and he explains that he was disinvited, presumably because of his pro-genocide tweet. Um, the organizers of the event uh, decided it would be better if we did not attend and we uh, were happy to to, um, uh, to abide by their wishes. Related to what you tweeted about Israel? I believe so. You know, I'm, I'm not sure. 
Yeah, and I think that uh, they were right to disinvite him. If you can't even take a stand and say the bare minimum while Israel is evicting people from their homes in Sheikh Jarrah, I mean, you have no business trying to even, you know, uh, create some sort of dialogue with the community. I think they should shun you. They're right to want to shun you because you drew a line in the sand. You, you just basically said with that tweet that I'll support Israel no matter what they do. They're always justified because they are the ones dealing with terrorists. They're not the terrorists. What they're doing, evicting Palestinians from their homes, that's not terrorism. Doing airstrikes, killing children, that's not terrorism. Everything that they do by definition is justified because they're the ones who are fighting the terrorists. So, yeah, I don't think you should uh, show your face uh, in these communities. Not unless you issue an apology and actually condemn Israel's crimes against humanity. Now, AOC saw that video and she responded saying, utterly shameful for Yang to try to show up to an Eid event after sending out a chest-thumping statement of support for a strike killing nine children, especially after his silence as Al-Aqsa was attacked. But then to try that in Astoria during Ramadan, they will let you know. Yeah, and she is absolutely correct. Um, and, and I say that as someone who has been critical of AOC's comments regarding Israel-Palestine in the past. I think that she needs to brush up on her foreign policy and imperialism uh, and, and really speak more clearly about these things, uh, not try to speak in vague generalities and beat around the bush, just unequivocally condemn the war crimes being committed against Israel. And she does that for the most part, but she still needs to improve here. Having said that, though, uh, the difference between Andrew Yang and AOC is like night and day. She's far superior to Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang is basically as bad as you can get. I mean, if you take a position where far-right extremists go out of their way to applaud you for taking said position because you're supporting ethnic cleansing, you might want to reevaluate your priorities and who you really want in your political coalition. But even though what Andrew Yang did was terrible, his rhetoric supporting genocide is unforgivable quite frankly he did manage to pull off one thing that a lot of folks had no idea was even possible as the surfs points out via twitter holy shit andrew yang just united the left and it's kind of true because you see leftists from all factions from all sides united in condemning what he said it's that bad it's that morally reprehensible uh, but what I really want the left to be united behind is a campaign to beat Andrew Yang, support Diane Morales, and uh, if you live in New York City, sign up to phone bank and canvas for her, donate to her campaign, because if you want to stop Andrew Yang and actually elect a, a true progressive, Diane Morales doesn't mince words when it comes to Israel-Palestine. She's not afraid to condemn the war crimes being committed against Palestinians by Israel. And I'll leave that there. You know, Andrew Yang, he wants to support genocide. Well, now you're dealing with the consequences of your uh, advocacy. So um, congratulations, Andrew Yang.